he's actually not talking to all immigrant communities or families. My dad wasn't born in America. He's not talking about my dad. It is, it, it is, it is, it is racism straight up. Donald Trump has devolved since his targeting of the Central Park, you know, his, his maligning and his, I mean, I mean, he has become something more racist, something more cruel. I mean, I just got through Mary Trump's book and I read Fred Trump's book. And I think we've covered this story erroneously as a policy he latched onto. This isn't a policy. This is the deepest, mm -hmm. darkest, most damaged part of him carrying out the most sadistic mass, well, you know, and he only carries it out if he prevails. But the, 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 the part of Project 2025 that he never runs from is the mass deportation of Americans living in communities, feeding everyone in a community in their diners or restaurants, working in every company in every community. I, I mean, the whole idea that he's running on policies that are too far right is false. He's running on the broken parts of himself. And I wonder, Congresswoman, you know, you're, you're in the state um, with the town that's been targeted and, and there are real people there. And some of them might be his supporters, but there, you can't, I mean, at that school, the three schools that were closed, there were people who may have parents who are, I mean, I mean when a school shuts down, nobody gets educated. When kids are at home because they're frightened because their parents have to tell them why the school shut down, everybody has to explain to their child that it was a bomb threat because Donald Trump told fantastical stories about their town. I mean, this is something that hurts everyone it touches. And I wonder, in your view, how can people help these communities and your state? Well, we have to acknowledge the, the facts. Uh, we the, the reality is the, the mayor of Springfield, the governor of Ohio, the city manager, have all debunked this claim, right? And so one of my dearest friends in Congress, Sheila Schifferless McCormick, um, is Haitian. This is hurtful to her. This is hurtful to her community. Um, this is something that was so um, troubling that I decided to call it out this week in our agriculture committee because it is deliberately divisive, untrue, and racist rhetoric. And it tells you a lot about J.D. Vance and his character or lack thereof. Um, he represents Ohio, and he it, it shows he's willing to denigrate his own community to serve the interests of the maniac of Mar-a-Lago. He puts him above everything. And, and this, and to your point, it's not every uh, country that um, they're concerned about. This is the man who called Haitian countries and African countries shithole countries, s whole countries. This is the man who called out NF NFL players, majority black, um, sons of bees. This is the man who instituted an anti-Muslim travel uh, ban when he first got into office. This is the person who started the birther movement of our first African-American president, uh, Barack Obama, questioning his uh, his citizenship, his, his native uh, roots of being born in America. So this is a person who has shown us time and time again, the person who referred to Mexicans as rapists and thugs. So it's very clear to me who he's targeting because he He's been married to two of his wives are immigrants, and so we don't hear very much about um, those type of immigrants when it comes to his disdain for immigrants. His uh, rant, his 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 um, rants are very specific to people of color, and so for me, it is troubling um, when he is willing to put so many people at risk. To your point. Bomb threats have been made at schools in the middle of a council meeting. People are having to evacuate. The, these are things that are creating chaos and confusion. And I'll just say this last point. We know who the author of confusion is. And if you know, you know. <laughs> um, Joy, I actually think that we have sort of collective PTSD from nine years of Trump. I think it's a huge political loser. He lost in 18, he lost in 20, he lost in 2022, and most of the polls show him behind. This isn't the campaign he planned to run. He planned to win in a landslide by, by reshaping the, the Republican mm -hmm. coalition. This is a last ditch Hail Mary spaghetti against the wall, ketchup bottle, you know, after he douses his double bacon cheese, but whatever 
whatever it is that he does when he's having a tantrum. These aren't the politics of, of winning. These are the politics of desperation. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if we're just going to put on our, our campaign hats, the three of us uh, here, uh, Nicole, there are 731,000 Haitian American uh, immigrants in the United States. And that's just as of two years ago. OK, so that's a two year old number. So there are more now. Forty nine percent of them live where? Florida. It's the largest. It's one of the largest um, voting groups in the state of Florida, which at this point has a Senate race that's a two point race and an abortion measure on the ballot and a marijuana measure on the ballot. Florida is considered a red state now, not a swing state. But you activate uh, 300,000, 200,000 voters by telling them how much you hate them and that you don't think that they're human and that you see them as cannibals who steal pets and eat them and that sort of thing. Wonder how that uh, is impacted. Two of the other states that have large cohorts of Haitian American voters, Pennsylvania and Georgia. So just if you want to be a crass political animal, just think just straight politics. This is stupid politics. Add to that the fact that you've got voters who are the undecided. Most people are decided. Most people have made up their minds about both Vice President Harris and Donald Trump. If you're an undecided white voter, you're now trying to make a decision whether you want to be with the people that are quoting neo-Nazis, that are gathering with neo-Nazis, getting their ideas from people like Laura Loomer. Do you want to be on that team or do you want to be on the team that's so broad that Dick Cheney and AOC are both on it? There's a broad team that's got moderate, middle of the road, um, you know, mildly progressive, but really broad policies that have to do with raising people's economic floor, giving people opportunity to start a business. She's talking about things like a child tax credit. You've got Tim Walls out there talking to rural communities and telling you how to fix your car. The normality of that campaign versus this, which is essentially a string of neo-Nazi memes strung together on TikTok and then asking for your vote. How is he growing by doing that? He's angering not just black communities and black immigrant communities, but also non-crazy, non-right-wing white communities who are saying, whoa, I don't think this is the team that I necessarily want to be on. We are 50 some odd days from the election. And by the way, because of early voting, people can make snap decisions about Donald Trump and Vice President Harris right now in states that are having early voting. So even if you want to take the morality out of it, and this is deeply immoral, ugly, disgusting, and and to the Congresswoman's point, there used to be a time when there were signs that said no Irish. There used to be a time when Italians were considered lower white and not welcome in the United States. All of the immigrant groups in this country have had their time in the barrel. But Donald Trump wants to never let black and brown folk up off the mat. He will never stop directing hate at them, at us, at people who look like myself and the congresswoman. It doesn't matter what you do, how many of them are Republicans, how many throw on a MAGA hat, how many rappers hang with him. He'll never let that go because, as you said, Nicole, this is who he is. And he only directs that kind of hate at people who are black and brown. And so black MAGA and brown MAGA, I think you need to step back and reevaluate your king because I'm not sure that he loves you the way you love him.